Uh, good morning, everybody. How are y'all doing? Uh, I'm sorry? Yeah, I know, but it's supposed to be a motion. It's not working. So. Anyway, um, we're Reliable One Resources. We're basically a water filtration company. Uh, this is our second go around at the Money Show here. And last year when we were here, we, we were just getting our feet wet as a company. And we were coming into our technologies, one of which is in the desalination market, and the other is in the oil water separation market, where we have two patented technologies now, one in those two, in those, uh, two areas. And I'm going to have our Vice President of Business Development, John Collier, and I'm going to come up here and explain to you how far we've come in a short period of time. Uh, we're very excited about where we're headed. Uh, and if any of you have any questions, I'd ask if you please wait till the end to ask for it so that we can get through the presentation and we'll be available afterwards at booth 707 for any questions you may have about anything. Uh, I'd like to introduce John Collier, our Vice President of Business Development. Sorry you were expecting Matt Damon. And <laughs> so, <laughs> what are you going to do? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending. Uh, Reliable One Resources presentation this morning. Uh, when we came last year to the Money Show, we were a company that was only five months old. Uh, we had a technology that we really, really believed in at the time, and yet we've come so much farther in just the last 12 months. So let's take you through that journey of what we had last year, where we are right now, what the opportunity is for our partners. We're so excited because we have a membrane technology that actually takes seawater down to potable water at one-ninth the cost of the current best technologies today. About one-ninth the energy cost of reverse osmosis, about one-tenth the cost of double distillation systems. And that's so important right now because everybody knows that there is a water crisis. Uh, probably 1.6 billion people approximately in the world today don't have access to clean water. And if somebody could crack that code of desalinating seawater at an affordable price, that would be esteemed as the holy grail. So we've all been trying to do it for a long period of time, but I don't think it's actually become a reality until uh, right around now. I'm going to explain how we did it, what we did, and what the opportunity is for our partners. This company was started by, uh, ironically enough, by very successful oil drillers, and they had a big problem. That problem was water. In the oil drilling industry, when you drill for a barrel of oil, you produce one barrel of oil, you get between three and 100 barrels of water, depending on where you are in the country and how old your well is. Now, the older the oil well gets, the more oil, the more water starts to come out of it, called the water cut, it starts to get more and more. But here's the thing. When that water comes out of an oil well, it comes out with toluene and benzene and xylene and cadmium and lead and mercury. And well, what do you do with that massive amount of water? It's about a trillion gallons every year that's lost irretrievably out of the potable cycle. Uh, right now, there's only one game in town. They put it right back into the ground in injection wells or what they call a disposal well. Well, that not only ends up seeping into the aquifer and the water table, but in Oklahoma recently, you've probably all seen the bottom of the ticker tapes on every news channel lately, that it's been unequivocally proven that the cause of all the earthquakes in Oklahoma right now are due to putting the frack water and the produced water from the oil wells back into the earth. Everybody thought it was the fracking, because when you fracture a well, you use this very concussive technology with C4 charges. You try to create all these interstices so all the, uh, the, the rocks crack and get all the water to go, all the oil to come back into your pipe. Uh, that wasn't it. They thought it might be the very concussive uh, E and P drilling, when you take 80,000 pound thumpers and you're looking for oil, you hit the ground as hard as you can with 80,000 pound thumpers and you send shock waves down and you read the shock waves that come back and that tells you if you have oil or water or natural gas under the ground. They thought it was that, it was not. What they found out was all 3,000 earthquakes that took place in Oklahoma in the last 24 months, every single one of them took place directly below a disposal well or an injection well. So four major studies later, through the University of Colorado, the Stanford University, the United States Geological Survey, and the Oklahoma Geological Survey, unequivocally says that the earthquakes are caused by putting the slippery water down into the injection wells. So how does that work? Well, most of the time, the fault lines don't lay, uh, lie perfectly 
uh, horizontal to the Earth's uh, surface. Usually the fault lines lie at some sort of an oblique angle, but there's always enough friction or pressure to keep those fault lines stabilized until you introduce a very slippery or viscous substance from that oily water into the fault line, and then you create a buckling of the fault, and it induces the tremors and incites the earthquakes. They didn't have any earthquakes really to speak of in Oklahoma or Kansas or, or Texas at, at nominal, and yet in the last, 3, 000, uh, in the last two years we've had 3,000. Uh, just recently we had a 5.8 just to the northwest of Cushing, Oklahoma. The governor of Oklahoma called it a matter of national security and said if it was any closer to Cushing itself, which is one of the major storage hubs for all the oil and natural gas in the United States, it would have breached the natural gas lines, it would have breached the oil storage hubs and created a, a, a dislocation of oil to all parts of the United States. So it's been declared a matter of national security. And our, our attorney and our president have introduced our technology uh, to the governor of Oklahoma and the Oklahoma Corporation Commission, which is the body that's responsible for superintending all the drilling in Oklahoma. And what they've asked us to do is come and show us the technology. Show us the desalination technology, and please show us your oil water separation technology, because what happened now is that they're shutting down those disposal wells, and they're shutting down the injection wells. They're not letting the companies in Cushing and Pawnee County and Oklahoma City, all these drilling companies, approximately 11 or 12 major companies, have been shut down from putting the water back into the injection and the disposal wells because the, the citizenry and the voting constituency simply will not countenance earthquakes in Oklahoma, which is understandable. Uh, they would do it before. They would just drill with impunity and put the water back into the disposal wells because it was the only game in town if you want to get oil. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we actually have an alternative. We have a, a viable, economic, viable alternative. And we think that the governors across the land are going to legislate that Reliable One's technology is going to be, be the de facto standard in how you must treat water in the oil industry in, in the future. In fact, we're going to introduce it in Oklahoma in a relatively short period of time. And I'd like to tell you exactly what we did. The reason why our technology works so much better than the other technology is because, not many people know this, the water that comes out of an oil well is seven to ten times saltier than seawater. Seawater is actually 34,000 parts per million chloride. Uh, an oil well in North Dakota, in the Bakken Shale, that's about 205,000 parts per million. Move over to the east coast of the Utica Shale and the Marseille Shale in Pennsylvania, you're about 310,000 parts per million. It's about one-third salt. That's viewed as a major contaminant uh, stream as well. Well, fast forward to what Reliable has been able to do is we've been able to take a membrane and coat it with a specific coating so that it rejects all the oil off the top of the membrane and it sucks the water in at a flux rate that's 2,100,000% times greater than the current technology. Stand over here. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, when you have the ability to take salts out of water, you're normally talking about reverse osmosis. That's the number one technology in the world today. But ladies and gentlemen, there are 22,000 reverse osmosis plants in the world right now. And there's really a need for about 60,000 because you've got 1.6 billion people in the world that don't have clean water on a daily basis. And the National Health Organization just came out and said by 2025, two-thirds of the globe is going to be in water scarcity. Well, the water usage goes up by 4% every year. People say, John, that doesn't sound like a lot to me. Well, just think back to 2007, not that long ago. We're using 40% more water today than we were using in 2007. The globe has almost 7 billion people on it. So the wars of consequence are going to end up being waged over the last vestige of clean water, because even though the world is awash in water, there's only 0.2% of it is available for drinking. So you'll notice, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at Goldman Sachs's portfolio, when you look at JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, Colbert, Kravis Roberts, Blackstone, the Carlyle Group, most all of them have been moving a significant amount of their portfolio 
toward controlling water assets. We believe that water is going to be the most valuable commodity of all going forward. You may have said that to yourself in the past, that I think water is going to be the most valuable commodity of all. I just wish I knew the best investment vehicle to take advantage of it. We're going to present that business case right now by showing you what the membrane has been able to do in both the oil water separation membrane and we have a desalination membrane. Remember, seawater is 34,000 parts per million, but the oil water is seven to ten times saltier. So I want to tell you what happens with a reverse osmosis system currently when you're trying to take these salts out of the seawater. They build four different membranes, and they, by design, misalign the pores, P-O-R-E. They misalign the pores of the four different membranes. It's all called the four cartridge system because they're trying to capture the sodium, the calcium, and the magnesium ions out of the seawater and remove it. Well, the pores are about a nanometer large in a normal RO system, pretty small. But you're going to see that the molecules that they're trying to remove are much smaller than that. That's why they take four different membranes and they on purpose misalign the pores. So as the water gets pushed through the membranes, somewhere between all four membranes, they hope to entrap or entrain the sodium and the calcium and the magnesium magnesium ions out of it, but what happens is they do successfully get the salts out, but it clogs the system on every single run. In fact, you need so much kilowatt and electrical energy on the front end of a reverse osmosis system that it becomes inordinately expensive. In fact, there are many more reverse osmosis systems five years ago than there are now because they're going out of business because the business model is too expensive, and I'll tell you why. The kilowatt intensity on the front end is so inordinately high because you have to push it through these very small nano screens. Then the system clogs on virtually every run. So you need, if I'm desalinating a million gallons of seawater today, I need at least 500,000 gallons of fresh water called a backwash just to unclog the micro screens and the nano pores on the back end. Otherwise, I'm going to clog the system on every single run. Electrical energy on the front end, clogging and sludge building in the system in the middle, always having to have to replace the membranes and then using, needing the backwash on the back end. It's, come, it's become very expensive. The system that we've created, ladies and gentlemen, obviates every single one of those deficiencies in desalination today. Our membrane literally takes graphene and coats the top of the membrane with the graphene because graphene is super hydrophilic. It sucks the water molecule into itself, and yet it's very oleophobic. It rejects the oil molecule. How do you do it? Well, we know that a lot of folks have been barking up the tree of graphene because it's such an amazing, amazing uh, substance. In fact, it's only it was discovered literally six years ago. It's the thinnest particle known, which is one atom thick of carbon, and you get it by heating methane gas at 1,000 degrees Celsius. Those carbon atoms self-assemble on a carbon foil, and they start to assemble themselves into hexagonal matrices, which are extremely strong bonds. In fact, graphene is 200 times the tensile strength of steel, and yet it's water permeable, so we get a very excellent medium for possibly a desalination candidate here. So we have the National Laboratory in Oak Ridge trying to do it. We have Lockheed Martin trying to do it. We have MIT guys trying to do it. But most everybody's failed using graphene as a desalination medium because it doesn't work in and of itself. Because every time you try to run the seawater through graphene alone, the interlayer spacing between the graphene molecules swells, and it doesn't provide the flux rate that you need. What we have discovered at Reliable One Resources both of our science have been working this for the last three years, is that if you can create reduced oxide flakes of graphene and make a coating and put the coating of the reduced oxide graphene on top of your ultrafiltration membrane, it works extremely well. Here's why it works so well. Remember in the four cartridge system, we were misaligning the pores because we were hoping to trap the salts in between? We've been able to control the pore size and if I give you this little bit of information, you'll be able to connect the dot, dots very poignantly. The molecular diameter of, excuse, the, mole, the molecular diameter of 
the H2O molecule is 0.289 nanometers, really, really small. It goes through our belt very, very easily. The molecular diameter of the carbon dioxide molecule is 0.331 nanometers. It gets rejected off the top of our membrane, as do all the sodium, the calcium, and the magnesium ions. So what happens is when we run the seawater through our membrane, we get the rejection of all of the molecules that we don't want, and we get the permeation of the only molecule that we do want. We also found that it's not only a function of being able to create, or here's the key word, standardize the pore size of your membrane, but also the geometry of the pore. So it's a function of the size, and it's also a function of geometry. We can literally create a molecular lock and key if we use the right shape of the pore. Let me give you an example. The H2O molecule looks just like this. Two hydrogen atoms going this way and an oxygen atom right at the bottom. It looks almost like a V. We have found out that the best configuration for the pore is to look like a conical shape or it actually, under an electron microscope, it looks like an hourglass. But for conversation purposes, let's call it a cone or a conical shape. If you have a conical shape pore, it literally acts like a molecular lock and key for the H2O molecule because that H2O molecule just slips right through that pore very, very easily. But yet you have your sodium, your calcium, and your magnesium ions, which are very spherical and much larger, and they get rejected off the top of the pore. So every time we run seawater through our system, we end up getting all the salts, the sodium, the calcium, the magnesium ions riding on top of the belt. After every run of seawater, we have an air knife that comes along and blows off all the chlorides off into its own vat. We just had a man call me two days ago uh, running 20 oil wells in the Marseille Shale up in Pennsylvania, asking for an RFQ of what could we do for them because their oil wells have been shut down. They're not drilling for oil right now because there's nowhere to put the water. So not only have the disposal wells, ladies and gentlemen, been shut down and the injection wells been shut down. In fact, 500 in Pawnee County and right around Oklahoma City and, Ca and Cushing. But now the actual producing wells are being shut down because there's nowhere to put the water. If they won't let them put the water back into the ground, well, then they have to ship it to Timbuktu. And with oil at $51 or $52 a barrel, it becomes a non-starter economically. So it's a big problem right now in Oklahoma. We have been asked to come and do the demonstration in front of the EPA, in front of the Oklahoma Corporation Commission, and also in front of the governor of Oklahoma. We're getting ready to do that shortly, but I want to tell you what we just did. We just finished our prototype. Remember last year when we came to the Money Show, all we had was a membrane, and we also had a great idea that we could put it into a conveyor belt system where the water would come into the chamber, it would run over the top of the membrane, and the water would run through, but everything else would get rejected off the top. That was a great idea. We didn't know if it was going to work. Well, two days ago, we finished our prototype, and we ran the oil water through it. And it evidenced the same efficacy in the prototype that we obtained when we ran it in the lab. We got a 99.7% separation rate between the oil and the water. But here's the key word, ladies and gentlemen, mechanically. We separate the oil and the water mechanically. That equals very inexpensively. That's really important for these drilling companies in Oklahoma. It's also important for the politicians because their re-election campaign is in question. It's also important for the citizens of Oklahoma because they don't want to endure the earthquakes. It's also important for the environment because we don't want to go ahead and clog the aquifers and the water table with putting toluene and xylene and benzene and cadmium and lead and mercury back in the, and you probably saw the History Channel special where they went to Colorado and they put a flame under some of the taps in, in the Colorado and of course the tap water just lights on fire, but they said there's no, no hydrocarbons in the water, but for some reason the tap water lights on fire. Um, so it makes its way into the aquifer, it makes its way in, into, the, uh, into the groundwater. Mm -hmm. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that water no longer has to go into the injection wells or into the disposal wells. We have a system right now that actually takes the water, cleans the oil water down to what we call beneficial level. You can put that water right back on your crops. You can give that water to your cattle. Uh, one further step we use takes it down to potable water where you can actually drink it. This is water that came out of 
an oil well. In fact, <clears throat> we're going to do a demonstration in a little bit where we're going to take mining water <laughs> and we're going to show you literally up here that we've taken water from mining camps and turned it into potable water. Most of the time, we don't have to take it to potable water. Most of the time, we just want to take it to that beneficial level, put it back on the farms, and to give it to the cattle, because that's where the preponderance of needs uh, exist right now. <clears throat> so we're going to be planning to take the demonstration, the physical demonstration, into Oklahoma after we do the demonstration of the prototype for the desalination unit. That's about two weeks away. We've got a film. It's loaded here somewhere today, you'll see. It's also running at our booth, by the way, where you'll see the oil water separation prototype. And the oil water sep separation prototype is literally running the oily water through it. And we're getting a 99.7% success rate. That's really exciting for the 12 or so companies around Cushing, Oklahoma, that have been shut down. Because here's what the governor and the Oklahoma Corporation Commission said to them. You won't get re-permitted to drill unless you show an environmentally safe way of how you're going to deal with this water. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to make this statement today. There aren't any other companies right now that are able to clean that water that's seven to ten times saltier than seawater because otherwise these companies would be drilling. They'd be able to drill, and they, and they can't. So nobody's been able to do this. Uh, Remember, reverse osmosis systems clog when you're running seawater through it. So running water that's seven to 10 times saltier than seawater through it, that's a non-starter. There's no, there's no system right now extant in the world today that can do it, save what we're going to introduce to you today. Reliable's oil water separation unit will literally be able to take this into a cost-effective position where we put the first plant up. The governor of Oklahoma wants the first plant to go in Cushing, because it's a matter of national security. Our first plant, which cost approximately $11 million, whenever we show you a number, we usually give you a 10% higher, just in case number, it's $12 million, but it's really for about $11 million for government purposes. And that plant will literally do 30,000 barrels of produced and or frack water in a 30 in a 24-hour period, 30,000 barrels, about 1.4 million gallons is what that totals because every barrel has 42 gallons of oil. That particular amount running through the plant in, in 24 hours has 1.5 to 2% oil coming right off the top. So as we separate all of the chlorides off the top of the belt, we have about 1.5 to 2% pure, high-grade, high-gravity oil that goes into its own separate vat that gets rejected off the belt, and that belongs to the plant. That, that ends up to be about 450 to 600 barrels of oil every single day. That's a really nice size oil well. Well, that belongs to the income of the plant. So right now, the economics work like this, ladies and gentlemen. When an oil company pulls the water out of the ground, they drop it off to the disposal well, or the injection well guys, and they pay them 65 cents a barrel just to drop it off. They got to go somewhere else to get water of a certain purity characteristic to be able to refract their wells at a dollar a barrel. Well, we're a one-stop shop. Instead of bringing the water to the disposal well or the injection well and putting it in the ground and ruining the aquifer and creating the earthquakes, we posit that they're going to bring it to Reliable One's fixed plant we're going to purify that water. They pay us 65 cents for every barrel, and we sell it back to them at a dollar a barrel. That works out very well for us. Also, we have 450 to 600 barrels of water every single 24-hour period that belongs to the plant and Reliable's investors. Now, remember the call we got from the folks up in the Marseille Shale up in Pennsylvania asking for us to give them a, an RFQ on what we could do for them because their 20 wells are shut down? Well, they said, we have a big problem we want to let you know about, and it's called a brine stream. So you have any way to get rid of that also? Well, the brine stream is all the salts that are left over, and that's always been viewed as a really big negative. Well, Reliable One was approached by a gentleman not too long ago. His name is Dean Loveland. He's the top salesman of chlorides into the seven northwestern states of the United States. And he came to us and he said, I can't find enough 
chlorides to be able to sell to the seven northwestern states because they need to mix it with sand and put it on the ground to make a product called Slicer, which is a de-icing and a traction control product. He said, do you guys have the ability, do you know anybody who could like maybe you know, desalinate water that comes out of an oil well? And we said, well, we're, we're doing that right now. He said, oh, could you tell me about it? Well, long story short, Dean Loveland now works for Reliable One Resources because we take all the chlorides that we sequester off and out of the produced water, and we use that to mix with the sand to sell to the seven northwestern states for the product called Slicer. So really, there's about four major income streams to the Reliable One plant. We have 65 cents a barrel coming in just to drop it off. We have a dollar a barrel going back out after we purify it. We have about 450 to 600 barrels of oil every single day that belongs to the plant, and we have all the sale of the chlorides. We had no idea, ladies and gentlemen, that the chlorides would be that valuable. It, it, it approaches approximately 17% of the net revenue to the bottom line. So we're very conservative, and in our projections, we tell you that the plant pays itself off in approximately 18 months. The real story is if the plant operates at 67% capacity, the plant gets paid off in less than 12 months. We like that business model. That plant costs us about, it's going to cost us about $11 million. We could put it in right now because we have several motivated parties. All the politicians wanted to go in for the reelection bid. All of the constituency and the citizens of Oklahoma wanted in. All the companies that had been shut down from drilling wanted in. And all the environmentalists wanted in. In fact, the governor said, I think all the governors are going to mandate that the disposal wells and the injection wells go out of existence. If if there was an economically viable alternative to it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there is. So this is what I'd like to posit to you as the business case for Reliable One. We put the first $11 million plant right in Cushing. That, that plant gets paid back at 67% capacity in, about, in a little less than 12 months. Well, we were just told by the governor's office and the Oklahoma Corporation Commission that we have a field just to the north of Cushing called the Fitz Field, F-I-T-Z. And ladies and gentlemen, the Fitz Field produces 540,000 barrels of frac and or produced water every single day. They don't want that frac or produced water going back into the injection wells or the disposal wells. That would require 18 of Reliable's plants to go in the Fitz Field. That's about a $1.7 billion income to Reliable in the course of a year. That's just one field in Oklahoma. That's how much frac and produced water is generated. I'm not talking about the state of Texas. I'm not talking about the state of Kansas. I'm not talking about anything else except one field in Oklahoma. Ladies and gentlemen, we could spend the next 10 years in Oklahoma and be a multi-billion dollar company if we can introduce the technology. We've already been approached by, uh, after we did one of these presentations, by a major money manager and said, look, I'm willing to give you the first $11 million to put up the first plant in Cushing. However, we want to have control of the company. But if it works in Cushing, just like you say it's going to work, then we'll give all the rest of the money that you need to put the rest of the 17 or 18 plants that you're going to have to put in the Fitz field. But ladies and gentlemen, if we didn't believe in the technology, we would have taken the deal in a heartbeat. We believe in the technology. We don't think this is going to be an $11 million uh, project. This is going to be a multi-billion dollar project because every single state in the United States is not going to want to put the frac water and the produced water in the ground anymore. That's over, as long as there's an economically viable alternative, and now there is. So I would like to, I would like to posit that Reliable One's investors are going to be the best beneficiaries because our investors last year bought the stock literally at a dollar a share. We have been approached by two major institutions right now and said, look, we'd like to take you public. We'd like to give you a pathway to where you can take you public. So. Normally, our chairman doesn't travel with us, but on this occasion, he did. So I want to take everybody, have an opportunity when you come back to our booth on booth number 707. Our chairman is with us, and I'd like you to go ahead and meet him. He's going to explain the business case regarding what the opportunity is for Reliable, but we're going to give it to you in a bottom line right here. They bought the stock at a dollar last year, and we've already prepared our audited financials for the S1. It's a process that takes about 13 to 14 months to come out as an, as an IPO. We're doing the valuation right now. We're doing the five-year performa. The valuation that we've already had back from a major third party came back at about $10 to $12 a share. That's based on this. If your technology was funded well enough 
to where your first one plant was up in Oklahoma, then your stock would be worth between $10 and $12 a share because we have a very small float and because it all gets paid off rather quickly in less than a year. That would be merit a stock worth about $10 to $12. Well, we wouldn't come out at 10 to $12. We'd like to discount that value when we first came out on one of the New York Stock Exchange markets because you always want to give the stock a place to go. So this is what the folks told us. They said, why don't you go ahead and prepare 12 or 13 major press releases and major announcements because when you get ready to go public, that's what makes the stock go up until you have your first plant up and it's cash flowing. So we're waiting to do our demonstration in front of the governor of Oklahoma in front of the EPA, in front of the Oklahoma Corporation Commission until we're ready to go ahead and pull the trigger, which is probably about five months because you have to do an SEC filing that, that gets qualified. What does that mean to our investors? That means that our investors could be buying a stock today at $1.50 and they could be looking at a stock that could be coming out on a publicly traded liquid market that's recognized by every single broker that's here at the Money Show in about 12 to 13 months. But we're looking, you already know what the valuation is. So that's our plan. That's the trajectory we're on. And now I want to talk to you a little bit about the desalination technology. The oil water separation technology in and of itself is a huge opportunity. As I mentioned, we could be in Oklahoma for the next 10 years and we couldn't say the demand for how many plants they'll need just to, just to satisfy the frack water and the produced water in Oklahoma. But what about the rest of the world who needs desalination? The desalination unit is now taking seawater down to potable water. Here's the number, 0.000903 cents per gallon. It's about one-ninth the cost of reverse osmosis, and it's about one-tenth the cost of double distillation systems. Now remember, we started out with a membrane. In about two weeks, we're going to run that seawater right through that prototype, and we just got the efficacy confirmed on the oil water separation unit two days ago just in time for the money show. Now we're going to do the same thing with the desalination unit. Once that desalination unit prototype yields the same efficacy, then the stock price will go commensurately higher. Remember, our, our folks have the opportunity to buy the stock pre-IPO at $1.50 right now, and yet some of the income streams that we're going to talk about today, we didn't even dream of having at this time last year. We hired a gentleman named Dr. Adam Chu. Dr. Adam Chu is a major scientist for the Department of Energy over the last 20 years. What Dr. Chu is working on is a hyperspectral sensing technology that literally gives us the ability to tell what every single contaminant that comes out of your water stream produces. Right now, we have it in the prototype. It looks just like your TV remote. He's got five algorithms written, and we can tell you out of your tap water what your chromium-6, your lead, your cadmium, your mercury, and your copper content is coming out of your water right now. Our folks are going to be able to take the sensor, run it right under their water system, and a digital readout comes back and shows you exactly what's coming out of your tap water or your well. Most people think, oh, I have a well. Um, most people don't realize that when you actually drill a water well, you're drilling a quasi-heavy metals well. Oh, I don't really believe that, John. Oh, what's that yellow stuff over? In, that's that orange stuff on your wall over there, <laughs> Mr. Ch There's so much iron and so many heavy metals coming out of wells right now. And, and I, I like to tell this to our folks. Y you may have seen it, and, and if you haven't, uh, we have a plan right now how we'd like to market the hyperspectral sensor. And I don't know if you folks have seen the new commercial for Credit Karma, but they show a bunch of people, individuals, because uh, they're now saying that you can fill out your taxes for free, and that's one of the things that Credit Karma is advertising. And they say it like this. They, they take a bunch of individuals, a girl doing the wash, a guy mowing the lawn, and they say, oh, no, I would much rather send my $150 to the big tax company. I don't want to do it for free. And the other and the girl says, oh, no, I've got way too much money. I don't want to keep it. I want to send it to the... T I think, ladies and gentlemen, that if we, if we had a commercial right now that's, that showed people saying, oh, no, I don't want to know what I'm washing my vegetables with. I would much rather remain ignorant as to what's coming in. Oh, no, I'd much rather drink a cadmium lead mercury cocktail out of the <laughs> Can you imagine? Now, I don't think there's one person that I know, I don't think there's anybody in the world that doesn't want to know what is coming out of their water tap system. And that gives power back to the individual. So I think this one product alone is going to suffice 
uh, as a very, very high income stream for Reliable, and that technology is now owned by Reliable One Resources. Um, one of the other hires that we just did is Dr. David Graham. Please look him up. Dr. David Graham is one of the top chemical engineers for British Petroleum in the last 20 years. In fact, one of Dr. Graham's chemical formulas made BP over $2 billion in a 12-month period of time. So we're very, very flattered to have Dr. Graham on our staff right now because, as I mentioned to you earlier, we've been able to do the frack water and the produced water desalination in a very cost-effective manner. Now we've added something to our, our Reliable One portfolio of technologies. It's called the chemical desalination process. We were just sent major toxic water from the Gold King Mine in Colorado. This water comes out very noxious. It comes out with mercury, it comes out with arsenic, it comes out with lead, it comes out with copper, it comes out with tin, and mining water is some of the dirtiest water you can get. Well, the technology that we have right now, when we add the chemical formula to and apply it to the mining water or the produced water, watch what happens to the water in approximately sure, 10 minutes. We have been able to take all of the chlorides, all of the nasties, all of the heavy metals, all of the toxins, and precipitate them out of the water, and you're left with what's called beneficial water. The third party analysis that we have on the chemical desalination technology is when they sent us the produced water from an oil well in Oklahoma, the, result sh the results showed that we took all contaminants down to undetectable levels. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a big deal because it's very cost effective. It's about or even less expensive than our mechanical separation of the oil and water membrane system. So when somebody delivers us, let's say, 100 million gallons of water, the beautiful thing about the chemical desalination technology is it's scalable. It's mobile. It's affordable in any single market that you want to take it to. Now, the only thing is about the chemical technology, it doesn't take out the radioactivity. And there are radioactive ingredients in some of the water we're getting from these oil wells. We've got radium coming out, we've got strontium-90 coming out, and boron is a real bear to try to get out as well. That has to be taken out by our electrocoagulation technology. So in our suite of technologies, ladies and gentlemen, of which we have seven technologies loaded in our Reliable One trailer, there is not a, a water stream on the mar in the marketplace today that we do not believe that we can deliver in a very, very cost-effective basis and clean in the oil industry and clean for seawater. And right now, as I mentioned to you, there's 22,000 plants right now worldwide as far as the desalination plants. Well, I think the business case for Reliable is literally this. The, the money manager that came and wanted to give us the $11 million but wanted to control the company said this. He said, my idea is this. I don't think anybody is going to continue to do desalination with RO once they understand that the Reliable technology rejects all of the sodium, the calcium, the magnesium ions off the top of the membrane because it's so much less expensive electrically. It doesn't foul anything out. You don't have any need for backwashing. So there are no downsides to the technology. In fact, it's one-fifth the operating and maintenance costs of reverse osmosis. And it's one-tenth the electrical cost of reverse osmosis. So we have a business plan where we could supplant the membrane technology that exists in the 22,000 RO plants that exist today. I don't know if you saw it, and I don't know if you realize how serious the water shortage for desalination is, but Saudi Arabia just spent $7.2 billion to put up one desalination plant. It's called the Ras Al Khair plant, right out of Al Kafji, Saudi Arabia, and it produces 228 million gallons of fresh water every day. Unfortunately, it's inordinately expensive. But if you want water in the Mideast, you have to use desalination because they have two aquifers in Saudi Arabia. The top one is called the rechargeable aquifer. It's depleted. 
The bottom one is called the non-rechargeable aquifer, and it's almost depleted. So in Bahrain, in Qatar, in Dubai, in Arab Emirates, in Saudi Arabia, it's called race to the bottom. They're drilling wells to get to the water as fast as they possibly can, but they know it's almost over. That's why they just spent $7.2 billion on a desalination plant. So we know, ladies and gentlemen, that the, world, the wars of consequence are going to end up being fought over the, the cleanest water, and we have a system right now that can deliver affordable water from desalination. We've met with two municipalities in Southern California. Both municipalities saw the technology and said, we'll take that the minute you show us your prototype. We want it. Because in California, they've had five years of drought. They have water restrictions. They don't have enough water to put on their farms. They don't have enough water to give to their cattle. Most of the farms, are, you can see, are, are completely dried. Uh, same thing in West Texas. The guys in West Texas, they don't have enough water to drill. In fact, one of the top oil consultants in the world told me, John, can I buy two of your oil water separation units right now? I said, we only finished the prototype, Lowell. This is Lowell Dunn for um, one of the major consultants for Amarada Hess and sat on the board of one of the top five major oil companies in the United States. He said, we're viewed as the pariah in the industry. We're viewed as the guys who ruin the water table, who ruin the aquifer, who make the earthquakes. If we could have your system right now, we'd be viewed as the hero. In fact, what happens, ladies and gentlemen, is we're actually adding water to the potable cycle. This water that's coming out of these oil wells, this trillion gallon that comes out of these produced and, and frack wells, that normally wouldn't be considered drinkable, but reliable water can turn, reliable water resources technology can turn it into beneficial water, can turn it ultimately into potable water if we need to. That can actually add a trillion gallons of fresh water to the marketplace every single year. And instead of irretrievably losing it, you, you pull it back into the marketplace. So we have a business case right now where we think that our best beneficiaries, without exception, are going to be our, our individual investors. About nine months ago, we were sent a sample of the most contaminated water from an aquifer in the United States called the Kansas Aquifer. There is a major issue, ladies and gentlemen, in the Midwest right now with contamination of the groundwater because of high nitrogen fertilizing for the last 40 years. The high nitrogen fertilizers have morphed into nitrates, and the nitrates have now toxified the aquifers in the Midwest. I'm not trying to advertise that, but that's what's happening right now. They delivered, it's, at, it's happening in Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Arkansas. Those four aquifers are now inundated with nitrates. They sent us the most toxic sample of all from the Kansas aquifer, asked us if we could clean it. They also sent it to four other companies, asked if they could clean it. No other company was successful in cleaning that water from the nitrates. It came in at 55 milligrams per liter. They said, if you can get it down below 10 milligrams per liter, we'll meet the standards to where we could have beneficial water, we could put it back on the ground, and we could take it down and, and, and use it for agriculture again. Right now, the farmers can't access it, and the municipalities can't access it. Nobody can access it. It's basically toxic. It came to us, we put it through our electrocoagulation technology, and I'm very proud to say that Reliable One Resources took it down to 2.5 milligrams per liter. 75% below the specs given to us by the Department of Energy. So this is what they told us. They said, we have a 40-year contract from a super fund that basically will go to the company that can prove and demonstrate the capability to perform. We want you to bring your electrocoagulation unit physically up to the Kansas aquifer and do it in front of us. We have a picture of our electrocoagulation unit. It's on one of the slides here. This is the electrocoagulation unit we're going to bring and do in front of the Department of Energy executives and folks of the National Laboratory that are in control of the groundwater. And that could be, in their words, all the discussions so far have centered around a 40-year Superfund cleanup contract for those four aquifers because unless something is done about it, those aquifers are going to go offline as far as <coughs> municipal drinking or farming access. It's a big deal. It's also reliable as only one company out of the five that could, was able to clean it. But the Department of Energy told us this. If you guys have an 8A status as your company, then it's going to produce a lot less paperwork for us, and it's going to be a lot easier for you guys to get the sole contract. Because when you're an 8A company, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to bid for the contract. You just have to demonstrate capability to perform. 
So we have now, as of two weeks ago, obtained our 8A status contract, and that means that once we demonstrate the capability to perform, we are in a non-bid status. We just get whatever the contract says we're going to be able to get from that 40-year Superfund contract, which is a very profitable endeavor for a reliable. So reliable's investors have quite a few things to look forward to. We're going to introduce the oil water separation technology into Oklahoma rather, rather soon. We're going to introduce the desalination technology to the rest of the world rather quickly. Uh, we're also going to take the electrocoagulation unit up at the end of March and put it in front of the uh, major national laboratory that's been constructed by, by the Department of Energy to clean this water. And we're also going to mass produce the hyperspectral sensor, which you and I both know we don't know anybody in the world who's not going to want the ability to know what's coming out of their water stream, either their well or their tap water. So with that income stream, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have a stock that could be worth a considerably higher, higher vantage point than we're espousing today. But we'd rather be conservative, and we'd rather let you connect the dots. Right now, our folks have the opportunity to buy it at $1.50. Again, we're going to be, we've already produced the audited financials for the S1, and we'll be coming out on a public market. The plan is within 13 to 14 months, so it's not a long time to wait. But I know that you guys had an opportunity to spend your time in uh, a lot of different places today, and we're very fortunate and thankful and grateful that you spent it uh, with us for the time that you did. We're in booth number 707. I, I ask you to go ahead and meet with our, our chairman. He's actually here today with us. And I don't think you'll find a better business case as far as what, we, what technology we have, which is all, by the way, patented. We have four major patents. Uh, utility patents that produce, protect all the design materials and operational aspects of the technology. So uh, we're just waiting to put that first plant up, and I think the rest is going to fall like dominoes. Thank you so much for your time today, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We, 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 we're going to take all of your You folks can see how it's <laughs> dropped, flocked down to the bottom, just from a chemical process in just a few minutes. Well, of course, there's other technologies. We would polish it after to get the chemicals out and so forth, but most of it is biodegradable. So this is our something we just discovered. And recently. that is very, very toxic, nasty water. That comes from the gold yeah, mine the gold in Colorado. Mine. <clears throat> and, the, and the water stream that's left over, the, the bottom, of course, goes out into a sediment tank when you're run it, running through your plant. But that's just for, for illustration purposes today. In our, in our brochure that uh, you folks have, right behind our, our, our brochure, in, in there you, we have our stock purchase agreement. It's literally one or two pages. Our folks uh, are still able to buy the stock at $1.50 while we're here at the show. Once we show the efficacy of the desalination unit, the stock will move up further from that point. And then, of course, once we uh, decide which one of these companies we're going to go with, uh, we have a plan, as you know, that we've talked about um, where we plan to end up and how long it's going to take. But I think our, our, individ our individual partners are going to be the ones who are the best beneficiaries. Uh, if you have any questions, please visit us uh, at booth 707. We have a a film that's going to be running uh, of our prototype of our oil water separation unit so you can literally watch the oil being separated from the water uh, on the film that's going to be running at the booth and also take an opportunity to meet our chairman who's with us today. Um, in fact, he just walked in the back of the room. If any of you didn't receive any of the folks, I 